So here's a typical cost breakdown of this power level. It's 144 volt, 500 amp. That's around 100 horsepower peak. But you know, you can get freeway speeds in 100 horsepower. So a Curtis 1231C, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Curtis. They, uh, they're about 1600 bucks new and about like $1,200, 10 years old. They just, they're just expensive. And the Kelly controller, they're kind of new on the market, the Chinese controller. Anybody ever shop at Harbor Freight? Yeah, you kind of have the idea there, man. You get okay. what you pay for? Yeah, you get what you pay for. <laughs> okay, so then, and then there's this controller, which we're going to be talking about today. And there's this uh, soldering station over there. You guys will be able to, anytime you want, you can go up and try and put something together. If you want, you can destroy it. Oh, I don't care. It's fine. So this one, you can put this controller together for $300 if you want to be way, way uh, do-it-yourself, drilling all your own little holes, but you kind of have to be precise about some of them. Or you could get it in a kit form where it's like 600 So, And it's, there's, there's probably 50 to 75 of them out there, and then some other ones, uh, different versions of it that other people have done. And people think it's better than the Curtis one, so that's kind of nice to know. So let's see. So there's, I don't know if you guys know how a controller works, but I was just going to spend a couple of minutes on the theory behind just a DC controller. Just keep it real simple so it's not too complicated, but there's two main parts. There's the control board. So the control board is kind of like the all the brains of the operation. They don't have much power, but they kind of, like the control board takes about two watts to keep it going. It's just almost nothing. To, but then what it does is it listens to the um, all the feedback from the power section and then makes decisions based on whatever that feedback is. And then there's the power section. Oh, look at that over there. Tim the Toolman Taylor would like this one over here. This one is the really lots and lots of current going through. It's just brute force, very dumb. It just turns on and off real, real fast. And over here is where all the smart stuff takes place. And you have to connect those two together, and then you drive away, hooray. Okay, so, all right, wow, next page. <laughs> so let's look at the control section in a little more detail. They, um, this is a board that actually, I made just a breadboard version of this uh, at first, and um, then that one blew up because it had it wasn't very good. We're gonna see a video of the person. He's here actually. <laughs> that um, he was doing a test of some burnouts and different things with it. It worked for a while. But this is the control board, an actual professional one. You 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 know you have a little program on the computer where you can route the little paths to everything and then you just send it off to a company and then they ship that back to you and then they're very cost effective just a few dollars each even though it looks like it'd be expensive so let's see so the control microcontroller is the thing that makes all of the decisions see all these little um, metal pins sticking out of it see like the little things some of those you did set them as inputs and some of them are outputs so like the inputs you say, oh, I'm listening. Oh, what's the throttle doing? Oh, the throttle's just a little bit. I'm going to go slow. Oh, and then like the current feedback. Whoa, it's too much current. Slow down, it's going to blow up. You know, so it makes all these decisions. But you have to program it. Which, let's see. Here's the programmer guy. Okay. There he is. <laughs> okay, so you can either spend six months of your own time kind of figuring out, um, whoa. That's the power section we're out there yet. <laughs> okay, so the, um, you can either program it yourself, write your own software, but I'm telling you, it's kind of a funny experience. You type something on the computer. Here, let me go to this website here where the, sent, where the code is all posted. Everything's open source with this, so all the software is freely available. You can change it however you want to and that kind of thing. Are you going to go to the website? Yeah, that link available on the website. I yeah, I tested it before. Let's see. Maybe it's already. Oh, well, maybe this is it. Oh, well, I was thinking about it. Okay, so it's it's available. You can um, you can go here and program the chip yourself if you want to be really do it yourself, or you can just 
get a pre-programmed chip, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. But here's all the code. Woo! See, it gets, you know, if you type something wrong, and you go and test it out in your car, you can go accidentally, like, almost ran into my neighbor's apple tree that way. So you have to be kind of careful. So, let's see, let's go back to the, well, I wasn't trying this with one hand before. Okay, all right. So basically, the, the control section is all the intelligence. You have to program it, or you just get a pre-programmed little microcontroller that does all of everything. It's nice to test it, so that's good. Okay, power section. Whoa, look at that guy. So there's three parts to a power section. MOSFETs, diodes, capacitors. We're going to look at each one of those real quick. MOSFETs, it stands for something really weird. It's like metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, I think. I don't know what that means. Okay, let's go to this. Let's see. So MOSFETs. It's like a hundred horsepower on-off switch. Like if we see the lights over there, imagine if it look at this top one. There we go. See the top one here where it's imagine them on for a short time and then off for a long time. On for a short time, off for a long time. If I was over with the lights going on off, 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 on off. The average would be kind of on the dim side because, you know, it would be mostly off. Now imagine if I was doing that like 16,000 times a second, it would give the appearance like a light dimmer of just barely being on. So if you're driving in the car and you're doing this one up here, the MOSFETs are only on a little bit at a time, then you're going to be driving like a little granny, you know, five miles an hour or something. And if you're right here in the middle, you're just kind of keeping up with traffic, you know. And then down the bottom, you're like, ah, oh, I can't feel my legs. You know, you're crashing or something. So, let's see here. Okay, so then there's the diodes. Remember, MOSFETs, capacitors, diodes. So diodes, I don't know if anybody's familiar with like a water hammer, that concept of that. This, uh, look at this number two here. Imagine current electricity, if you will, huh? current going through this little on-off switch, this MOSFET. Ooh, look at my parallels. Okay, so glowing through the MOSFET there, and then all of a sudden the MOSFET turns off. Oh no, the current is still going. It would destroy the MOSFET. But fortunately there's diodes there, and then they're like a little pressure relief valve. that It allows the current while the MOSFETs are off, it gives a direction for the current to go. So it flows somewhere else without destroying the MOSFET. So diodes are there just to be keep it safe. Okay, then I'm a little out of hand with my transitions. Okay, capacitors. Okay, so would you rather get your electrons from the batteries or from the inside of the controller? The batteries, look how far that little kid has to walk to get his electrons from the batteries to the motor, that's a long ways, and he's just a little kid. But over here, or would you rather just have it just right available? Mm, I think I'd rather have it on. So the reason for the capacitors is the MOSFETs suck tons and tons of power, so they need something nearby to suck the power from. So it just sucks it from the capacitors, and then the capacitors are just like, just filling up nice and slowly from the batteries outside. It would be very bad if you don't include capacitors. So make sure you <laughs> Okay. So that's enough stupid. Well, it wasn't stupid, Gary. Jeez. Okay, let's solder the control board. Let's take a look at it. So I had a little I have a little video of it. It's kind of like playing Where's Waldo? Uh, where the the board, um, there's a sample board up there. By the way, I want you guys to feel free at any time to walk up because it's on right now and there's all the little baggies there, and there's even a little control board. And the, just take a little wrist, resistor bag, open it up, and maybe it's like R1, for example. That means resistor one. And you look on the little control board, and you're like, R1, R1, R1. That's the where's Waldo part. You're like, R1, where's R1? Then you find R1, and then you stick the resistor in. You solder it into place. Even if you don't know how to solder, that's fine. It's kind of fun just to give it a try. And... Hey, Paul. Huh? Maybe we just want to take one of the control boards, pass it around, so everyone gets to see one. That's a good idea. I have an extra, strangely enough. Let's see. Oh, we can download the gold parts. It's over. 
We have the one with all the parts on it. The one with the wood on it? The, the one with all the parts, the resistors and everything. Oh! This one completed one. Yeah, why don't we pass that around? This one's a little bit. It won't, it's broken, so it's okay. <laughs> Essentially his. Yeah, I'm the guy who broke that. <laughs> okay, let's see. So you'll, you'll notice on the little board as it gets passed around that there's little R1, R2, things like that. Let's take a look at this soldering video here real quick. Where did it go? The first one. Oh, it's still poking up here. That's a nice cheap place to get electronics. 
So you go over to, you click on something, and then you can, you can see, and then, well, there it is. And then you say, enter quantity. Well, I need a D2 and D6, so last time I checked, that's two things. So you just hit two there, and then you click buy, and you know, they're pretty cheap, you know, 37 cents each or whatever. So, it's a pretty, you can be very do-it-yourself. Some people don't like going through that process and clicking on each little thing. And if you don't like that, then also uh, we sell like a kit where it's just, we have all the little parts labeled and big and stuff like that. Or if you want to save a few bucks and do it yourself, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to the slideshow here. So, okay, so get some soldering practice. There's one guy doing it. Anytime you want, go play with Waldo. So anyway, what? That presenter isn't saying anything of value. Jeez, me. All right, let's look at the power section now. Remember, there's the control section and the power section. The power section is all the big beefcake stuff where all the heavy duty current and heavy metals. The left side over there, see up on that table? The left half of the table? That's where all the power stuff is. Feel free to take whatever you want out of any bag you want or anything. There's um, big old blocks of aluminum, well, one big block of aluminum, and heavy duty copper, and just the power board is much thicker copper also. And so that's where all the, the big stuff happens. So we can check out pages 20 through 56 of the health file. That's, what, that's where they have that's where we go through that. And see, it's just kind of like playing Legos or something. Um, I wish this was like a three hour thing or something. We could go through every single page and you guys would be so bored. Okay, see, the not too many pieces, just big old hunks of metal that just one thing sits on top of another thing. You use this stuff called silver conductive epoxy that you just kind of put on the little uh, places where the big copper bars sit and then that's like it's conductive and you can bolt it to it and it gets really good contact. You know, just see, not rocket science, just stick a bar on there and then just kind of stick a big aluminum block on top of that. It's kind of fun actually, it's not too hard. A lot of people that have had, they've done a little soldering but they've had no experience with electronics maybe, um, or very little. They, there's a bunch of them out there that are just driving their car around. I think the most mileage is maybe 7,000 miles on one of the controllers right now. So they're doing pretty well. Let's see. So, you know, just putting it together. Do you hear the diodes? Kind of bend the legs, and that's not too complex. I won't go through every single page because we've run out of time. Let's see here. MOSFETs. See, MOS diodes on one side, MOSFETs on the other. It's easiest if you walk up and you can kind of look at like, oh, okay, the, the power board. Is the power board being passed around too, by the way? Okay, so the power board has diodes on one side, MOSFETs on the other, and you can also take some capacitors out and try and plug them into the power board up there if you want to give it a try. Just snap them all in. Heck, you can solder them in if you want, I don't care. And just snap them all together. See? Can you lengthen the, uh, the, uh, the longevity of the board by creating a the cautiously than ramming the cylinder? Probably, yeah. The, the, the guy that has 7,000 miles on his, he's down in Phoenix, Arizona, which isn't real friendly as far as he goes, but he's, he's not flooring it all over the place. He just, he drives about 40 miles a day, you know, and it's, um, He's drives on the freeway, but he only goes like 55. And so you always see, he had a couple of videos where everybody keeps passing him because he's just kind of, I don't know, he just likes driving 55, I guess. And that one's been doing good. Whereas, um, I haven't heard of any major failure. I mean, I haven't heard of any failures where, because people were slamming on the gas. So I kind of built it into the software though, where it's like if they try to slam on the gas, it still kind of ramps up. So it's like, you know, you take it out of their hands to make that decision a little bit. <laughs> um, 
So he just stick them in a little hole, solder them into place. The tools you would need to assemble something like this are like a 5 16 inch wrench. Like all the tools are up there, so like a little 5 16 inch wrench there, and a screwdriver. A lot of people have those. <coughs> hey, look. Who knows? And a couple of capacitors here, soldering. So this could take a long time, but I'm going to just kind of, it's just showing it picture by picture. I wasn't sure how the best way to do a, here's how you put together a whole thing in 45 minutes, so it's kind of an overview more than anything else. Here are the capacitors. They're up there too, so you can go ahead and try and snap them in if you want to into the power board, just to kind of see how it feels. Those, remember, those are the things that store the energy that, uh, from the batteries so that every time the MOSFETs turn on, they need a ton of power really fast, and the, MOS, uh, the capacitors are nice and close, and they're like, here, take it from us. 